Hey folks, this is my analysis of analysis, if you will. Dave Vellante sat down with George Gilbert, Rob Stretchy, and Andy Thry. They went over two new database vendors events, which happened the same week, late last month, which are Databricks and Snowflake. So they compared and contrasted these two platforms and they, they did very good deep analysis. You should watch that video and or read that report because what Dave does weekly is he puts the, the video up as well as the same stuff in the written format with all the screenshots and everything. So if you're a good fast reader, you can read that. Or if you're like me, a slow reader, you can watch the video while doing some other chores and all that stuff. So I prefer video. Let's set the stage. They compared mainly two vendors, Databricks and Snowflake, but at times they brought in MongoDB as well, but very rarely. So I'm, I'm leaving the Mongo, MongoDB out for this discussion. I think comparing these two vendors, Snowflake and Databricks, one is more business savvy in their narrative, one is more like tech savvy. I think that's very, like it's a nuance, but very important to understand like who they are trying to appeal to. So that's number one. So business sort of savvy messaging versus practitioner savvy or technology savvy. So so in this case, as you know, you, you can maybe easily read that Snowflake is more like business savvy, whereas Databricks is more practitioner slash technology savvy vendor. The other one is open versus open source. Uh, they talked about that, but I think it's important to spell it out clearly that Snowflake is a little more closed from the proprietariness side of things, but otherwise it's open platform, but not open source. But on the other side, there's a lot of open source consumption uh, and or plugins, which are on the Databricks side. So that's number two. Number three is the, I think that the idea of the sort of skills gravity, which vendor will have easy time to bring in people into their fold, practitioners into their fold. I think Databricks that has an edge there because of the open source, like they are consuming a lot of open source modules and people are trained on that for a long time. And um, they, they will, I think, reap the benefit of that. As compared to uh, Snowflake, you can't get your hands on the Snowflake platform unless you are working at a uh, bigger vendor which has their licenses and they, they, are si they have signed up for, the, for, for their platform, even though they have lightweight platform and, and um, you can try that, but still, I think uh, Databricks has an edge there as well. Another interesting, uh, I think, uh, remark was made by Dave Vellante that uh, it's largely middleware on, on the Databricks side. Yeah, it looks like it. Yes, it does look like it's a middleware sort of platform. I think they have to be a little careful about creating that narrative, that like what it is. It is ready to use platform or it's like take all these pieces and put it together sort of kind of platform and um, that's interesting on the other side on the on the snowflake side it's very uh, crispy sort of message uh, that how they will do that of course again great analysis from dave and andy and um, george and and rob they, they talk extensively about the data science and ai sort of differences between these these two vendors I usually say this to vendors that you must have a good, thorough objection list uh, compiled all the time for your salespeople or go-to-market strategy people to take a look at so, so you can sort of address all those objections from the field in your collateral, in your messaging, in your narratives, in your product design, and in your go-to-market strategy. On that note, I think Snowflake can leverage their ecosystem strength. If somebody comes and says like, their competition is open source, they can say, hey, look at our ecosystem. I think that on the ecosystem side, there's a great story which uh, Snowflake has 
and uh, it's more like crisper story to tell i think one reason is because they they, they were a little ahead when they went to the market and they, they have done their ipo they have some momentum behind them but but don't underestimate Databricks team. They are moving fast. And another interesting part was that uh, Databricks conference was in San Francisco. They had some heavy hitters, ex-Google CEO and Mark Andreessen type of thought leaders talking at their conference. I think that, that that worked sort of well for them. And the crowd in the Bay Area is also the crowd in the Bay Area, if you will. And uh, and Snowflake was doing the, the event same week, same days almost in Las Vegas. They had good, you know, uh, presence as well. They did uh, Monday night presentation with NVIDIA CEO. That was uh, very interesting. So another difference. But going forward in 2024, Snowflake will do their event in San Francisco. That's a welcome news. Another thing is that I'm always cognizant of the fact or very conscious of the fact that, including myself, what we do normally is when we do analysis, we, we have these broad strokes, right? So uh, broad stroke means like, okay, we think all customers are, look alike or practitioners look alike, and they don't actually. They're personas of customers as well. Each customer has personas, of course, different roles and responsibilities, but customers themselves or companies themselves have certain personas that their size is different how much they value technology is different how much regulation they are dealing with matters are they government non-government there's so many facets to a customer as well and what kind of customers snowflake will appeal to versus what kind of customers uh, databricks will appeal to i think that's another nuance but very important nuance and the market is quite big, so it's not like a winner-take-all market. Database market is growing. And I also did that tweet. It's like, as data is growing, the database market is growing because database is not only the relational database these days. It's all everything, text, you know, pictures and videos and um, relational data, non-relational data, even with chat GPT-like systems or, or large language models conversational data which is not formatted properly is very useful data so as data grows we need different type of databases to analyze that data that includes time series databases that includes vector databases that includes non-sql sql databases and all sort of stuff and new flavors will come into the picture as well another thing actually i'm, I'm debating within myself is that we tend to see that most of the analytics will be, most of us, not not all of us, uh, tend to think that most of the analytics will be done through AI. I have some reservation on that note. I don't think AI can do all the analytics. I think AI can do bulk of analytics, but there will be some analytics which will be done through traditional means and or non-generative AI or not using large language models. So we can't throw everything under sort of one umbrella. Again, we can't broad stroke um, this aspect where like say this technology will solve all our analytic problems and or application database related problems like when we cook up the applications and we need persistence like we need polyglotism in our approaches as well as technology that includes architectures another point, minor point i want to make is the that we have been talking about all the training and training and training how about the inference i think inference needs different type of compute much lighter in most cases, not all cases, because some models are compute savvy. Actually, most models are compute savvy on training side, but light on the inference, and it can be reverse as well for different type of models. But mostly training is compute savvy, inference is less compute savvy. And we'll be doing more, a lot more inference than uh, the training. Right now, the focus is on training, but as we progress, into the future, uh, things will change. Another um, minor point nuance is that I think Databricks has a little more wiggle room 
on their partnerships uh, and alliances side because they are not public company yet they start a little late and uh, they're more open source as compared to snowflake snowflake has locked into certain type of architecture where you pay for the resources when you use it so they have their their architectural approach is more locked in their uh, also what they build on top of is a bit locked in as compared to databricks i think databricks has a little more uh, flexibility on the architecture side and um, and on the ecosystem side i might be wrong i, w I would love to hear your opinion on that of course uh, i think uh, snowflakes folks will disagree with me uh, viciously another thing is that uh, databricks mentioned their data marketplace and so does snowflake I, I, I think that's interesting sort of concept and i mean not all the vendors will be selling their data or and or their customers data so that's a little side note thing i think the data marketplaces uh but uh, some of the their vendors might n need that capability, but most will not. I think bringing application to the data is important sort of distinction Snowflake is trying to make, which makes sense to sort of most extent, but sometimes um, that narrative narrative can be pushed too much where piss off traditional developers and say like hey like uh, not every application is going to be data application per se a new term from data mesh people <laughs> uh, i will not go there today yes so i i'm actually <laughs> this this video is produced from two pages of my notes and i'm going through this these notes and uh all in all, actually, when we look at any vendor, there's economics involved, right? There's technology involved. There's a billing model or business, their business model involved. There's anthropology involved as well. Like how will people react to that solution? How will people see that? How will practitioners see that? And how greedy the, 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 the vendor looks? What's their managing style of their leaders? I think you can you can judge yourself like which leader comes across as more like open inclusive versus which leader is more like like kind of we know it more than you do and what leaders it comes across as like hey we are open to ideas and let's figure this out and um, humble versus not humble in their demeanor you know that matters as well so all these little things matter and which vendor appreciates marketing efforts more than the other vendor storytelling more than other vendors like one vendor can be more can use more influencer sort of strategy uh, versus the other so all these little things will matter in in there are some stark differences between these two two vendors i will rely on you to make that distinction i think you know where i'm going with that with that said dave george rob andy yeah, it, it's not that your analysis are less or irrelevant or something like that, but it, I loved it. Uh, it's easier to do analysis over analysis after the fact, you know, um, after listening to you, to your talk and your 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 work. And um, I'm not poking holes, but I'm trying to add a few things. I hope few of the many things I have mentioned here make sense to you guys and. Uh, I love discussing stuff with you guys and sitting with you and riffing on these things. And uh, with that said, I'm closing it here. So it's I know it's a long video response, but hey, that's what it is. Thank you for doing all the work you do and see you out there in the ether. Thank you. <laughs>